Merkel must go, they chant. The refugees may see the German Chancellor as their savior, but these people do not. To them, she is Mother Teresa. People's traitor, they shout. This is the backlash against Germany's generous refugee policy. These are the dissenters, and their numbers are swelling. The Islamization. Islamization, that's the threat, Andreas tells me. I've got nothing against people fleeing war, but everyone is coming here. Germany will take in more than a million refugees this year. It's a policy supported by all the major parties. Man kann, wenn man, wenn es wirklich neu wollen, kommen sollten, was, was hat man für eine Alternative? SPD, CDU, Grüne, Linke, die sind alle für dasselbe. Die Merkel sagt heute, es wird ungehindert weiter. These people may not be the German political mainstream, but this is much more than a fringe group now. These are people who feel that they're not being listened to and people who now feel in open revolt against their leader. These protests attract families, middle-class professionals, the elderly. But there are also members of the far right, and the boundaries are becoming blurred. Peaceful demonstrations have spilled over into violence. This is Heidenau in small town Saxony, the eastern region at the heart of the protests. This summer, police fought running battles with young men outside a supermarket next to a migrant center. Newcomers here still have reason to be nervous. Some of the migrants at that center told us they were woken at four in the morning by firecrackers. The protesters haven't gone away. The riots outside this supermarket could have been the moment where Angela Merkel tried to mollify the protesters or modified her refugee policy. Instead, she's pushing on through. We can do this, she's saying, as thousands more refugees have come across the border. It's almost as if she's testing the limits of Germany's tolerant political consensus. Here in the east, there are marches almost every day. In Freital, a suburb of Dresden, anti-immigrant sentiment is bleeding into a more general sense of alienation. We don't want a civil war, this poster reads. This is a movement of the disaffected, who see the refugees as a challenge to their German identity. Wir oder die wollen Deutschland kaputt machen, mit Absicht kaputt machen. Unsere linke Regierung. Das Mischvolk. Ja, die wollen das Mischvolk. Die wollen, wie, wie sie schon sagt, das, ich kann es Ihnen nicht sagen. Das what, what is Mischvolk? What, what does that mean? Um, der Deutsche soll aussterben und so lieber. Wie sind Amerika also? Mischen das alles. Land, ne? Ja genau. Uh, mixing. Across Germany, the past few months has seen a rise in far-right violence. That rise has been most marked here in Dresden, where police have been struggling to cope with an increase in extremist activity. The security services told us they disrupted a plot earlier this year by a group calling itself the Old School Society to attack mosques and asylum seekers' homes. They were real Nazi racists. They said that Muslims and people from other countries don't belong here. Let's get rid of them and let's do that with violent means. The chief of internal intelligence for the Saxony region told me that the far right is poised to take advantage of the refugee crisis. What they are able to do is alienating more and more people from the democratic process and democracy without Democrats can't work. And this subject especially, the fear of those many people seeking refuge in Germany right now is the subject the right-wing extremists have waited for. It's not easy to persuade right-wing extremists to talk openly on camera. We spent some time in a bar in a Dresden suburb, a place frequented by people on the far right. There are strict laws in Germany against promoting Nazi ideology, so people choose their words carefully. Die ganze Befürchtung, die ist da, die jeder von uns hat, dass es zum Bürgerkrieg kommen wird, dass sich irgendwann Leute dort zusammentun 
um dort wirklich zum bewaffneten Widerstand dort zu greifen. Ich persönlich gehe, bin von der friedlichen Fraktion. Ich kenne Leute, die sich schon intensiv dort bewaffnet haben und ähm, die sich darauf auf diesen Bürgerkrieg vorbereiten. Ja. The refugee crisis and the sense of injustice among some Germans presents an opportunity to the far right to reopen older wounds, to revisit the past, including the issue of Germany's post-war borders and territory that is now in Poland. Zum Beispiel, dass Schlesien besetzt ist, ja, dass Ostpreußen besetzt ist, und dann Schritt für Schritt müsste dort irgendwie Pläne dort ausgearbeitet werden, um wirklich dort aus Unrecht wieder Recht zu machen. Friedlich und zivilisiert. To be clear, most recent arrivals say they've been welcomed with open arms. Last weekend, Saxony alone took in 2,000 refugees. That's half as many as Britain says it'll accept in a whole year. Saxony's intelligence chief says his job would be easier if other European countries, including Britain, also took in more. Well, I think for many Germans, the feeling that we take more than it's our share um, it's very strong. So I think from a sense of fair play, <laughs> a very British uh, concept, um, it would help. Send them home, send them home, they chant in Dresden's Neumarkt. They've been gathering every Monday for a year now. All of this began before the arrival of hundreds of thousands of refugees. The migrant crisis has only fueled the movement. Many of these people have got nothing to do with the far right, or at least that wasn't their primary motivation for coming here. But they do feel that they've been ignored, and there's a strong sense now that the longer that continues, the more they'll be pushed to the extremes. These people are styling themselves as the resistance. So long as the refugees keep coming, they say, they will keep on marching.